Welcome back everyone, and today I'll be showing you how to make Teflon joint sleeves out of cheap Teflon tape, such as this stuff. Just buy the cheapest stuff available. You want thin Teflon, you don't want something too thick. So you're just going to take the Teflon and wrap a few rounds around your ground glass joint. I did three, um, three coats or whatever, but if you want a thinner product, which is better if you want a cat clip or um, you want a better vacuum seal, then you can use less layers. Of course, if you use less, then it's a lot less durable. So now simply take out some sort of fire source, such as a blowtorch, and simply heat up the Teflon. Now do this under ventilation. Heating up Teflon gives off nasty fumes. Now we aren't quite heating Teflon to its melting point, uh, not really melting point, but plastic transition point, which is around 300, above 300 actually, where it goes semi-translucent. I would know because I actually did that once. But yeah, we don't want it to get that hot because then it's sort of difficult to work with, at least in my opinion. So we simply heat it up and we press into ground glass joint. And then we heat it in the ground glass joint while applying a tiny bit of pressure on it. Do not apply too much pressure. You do not want to break the glass and impale yourself with it. Occasionally heat up the inside of glass as well because we want the Teflon to be thoroughly sintered together. Basically, we're softening up the Teflon enough that it's able to stick to each other, but not quite molten. Now, the original plan to make a better product was actually to use a heated aluminum die press, but then it's getting off track because it's no longer access accessible by amateurs. I want this to be accessible am by amateurs, so I'm going to leave it like this. Now, after like around three or four minutes of heating, if you take a close look at it, it should look leathery like this. This means that it has worked out very nicely and you're done. It's quite simple, it's not too difficult to do, and you can mass produce these if you really want to. So now after it's cooled down, I'm going to douse it with a tiny bit of acetone. I don't think this is absolutely necessary, but I found it makes removing sleeves a bit easier. The acetone gets soaked into the Teflon, and because it's still a bit hot, it boils off immediately, and that provides a little pressure on the Teflon, making it a bit easier to remove. You still may need to be um, pry it off, but after a while, if you wet your hand slightly and then just give it a little twist, it should come off like this. And you can see it's centered together nicely because it's not falling apart. So there it is. It's that simple. You can see it's very thin uh, compared to the commercial stuff, of course. Now that's one of the disadvantages of this. It's thin. But an advantage, of course, is that you can use a cat clip on it. However, you can see because this is made of Teflon tape and that we did not heat it up to the glass transition point, it will be porous, it will soak up stuff, and it will not hold a vacuum very well. Trust me, I tried to do a vacuum distillation of cooking oil with this, it did not work very well. So yeah, you don't want to get um, any non-polar solvent, non-polar solvents will um, soak up into this. Bromine will definitely soak up into this. If you want, you can imp impregnate this Teflon sleeve with some sort of grease though, if you really want to. Now you can see while it's wet, it is a bit more difficult to put on glass and remove, it is possible. So in order to take it off, just simply slide it off and put it on, put it on. It's very simple, you pinch it and you just twist. Now you can see it fits in glass joints very well. Now of course, again, it's a bit difficult to remove while wet, so I would recommend to let it dry before handling it. Another note is that soapy water will actually get absorbed into this, while normal water will be repelled like Teflon. So if you're going to wash this with hot soapy water, make sure to wash it out thoroughly so no soap remains inside of it. And to simply put it on, again pinch it on the sides and give it a little twist and it'll go on. And to remove it, just do the same but pull on the glass instead. So here's a close up, you can see the leathery texture. And here's our four final product. In order to store it, you can either put it on some sort of cylindrical object, such as a glass stopper, and just store it like this, or alternatively, you could actually flatten it like this. As long as you don't crease it too hard, it'll be usable. You just have to pull on it, and then it'll open up again. You can put your glass a joint in. Rather simple. And um, yeah, that's really it for this video. Again, this is not very good at sealing vacuum. I would have pursued making this into a more... Um, like solid non-porous material, but that would need aluminum die press that's heated and that's not really possible by most amateurs 
if they don't have access to a shop or get it custom made. Again, if someone else wants to like continue on doing research in this, you can. I'm just not going to, I'll leave it right here because the original idea of this was to make it amateur accessible and easily done by a home chemist. A home chemist has ground glass, of course. You just stick two pieces of ground glass together with a bit of Teflon tape and heat it up and that's it. Get, making a custom heated dye press is just a bit more finicky and yeah, it's not really in the reach of some amateur chemists. So yeah, that's it. That's really it for this video. Yeah.